Hi, I'm Christina Poston. I'm a preservation planner with the City of Columbia. And today I'm going to be briefly going over the history of the University Architectural Conservation District. And this area um, of the Architectural Conservation District is part of the University Hill neighborhood. Um, which was originally laid out with the, the plans of the City of Columbia that were drawn up in 1786, along with the university itself, which at the time was known as the South Carolina College or the College of South Carolina. These streets um, that we see today, like Green Street, Gibbs, Barnwell, all of these were laid out on that original plan. However, they weren't actually constructed until much later. And in fact, much of the development in the area really didn't take off until around the mid 1800s, really between 1850 and 1860 is when you see uh, the area really becoming fully developed um, and taking off as a residential area. Um, just as it was taking off, of course, the Civil War uh, occurred and not much development was going on in the area or the city itself for that matter during the Civil War. Following the war um, and during the reconstruction period, as with much of the city, development was kind of slow to catch on again. But by 1875, the area boasted around 20 houses in the area. And this also spurred the, the streets to be numbered. So addresses were actually created um, around 1875 for this area. Development continued to grow into the 1890s, especially once the electric trolley car was placed along Gervais Street, which really helped residences get to and from downtown rather easily and added um, quite a convenience to the community. Other conveniences that really helped spur uh, development in the area uh, was in the latter half of the 1890s and well into the early 1900s was uh, the advancement of electricity and paved streets throughout the community, as well as um, municipal water during this time. This area really continued to grow throughout the 1940s and 50s. And through the 1960s and 1970s, the college itself or the University of South Carolina at this point um, started having growing pains of its own and started uh, inching its way into, into the University Hill neighborhood um, where it incorporated a lot of its administration buildings and existing residential homes, which you can see along College Street today. In 1964, it was locally designated as an architectural conservation district by the city, and it was one of the very first local historic districts the city designated. Some fun facts about the University Hill area. Um, as some noted architects not only built um, buildings within the area, but they also lived in several of the homes as well, uh, such as Lafay and Lafay, uh, specifically George Lafay, um, built his residence at 1716 uh, um, College Street. Um, he also designed the home at 1714 College right next door. Uh, Urquhart and Johnson, um, probably most notably known for 915 Greg, uh, which is one of the only examples of Italian Renaissance revival styles in the district. Also of Urquhart and Johnson would be colonial revival style um, located at 1012 Lawrence. So to go further into detail about some of these uh, architectural styles that you'll see throughout the district, often um, designed by those noted architects, um, one being the colonial revival, probably the most noticeable of the styles within this district. It's often known for its symmetrical appearance, um, whereas if you were to split the house right down the middle, the left side would look just like the right. Common features on a colonial rival, revival that's very distinctive is its very elegant entrance, often has a pediment or a gabled stoop entrance with columns or pilasters that lead to a very, very decorative door, um, often with fan lights and side lights. Another style um, seen throughout the district, um, it's a little less common in numbers, but definitely has a high stance in, in its style, is the Tudor Revival. And these are typically often quite noticeable right away from its faux half timbering, um, with its stucco detailing. Um, they often have steep, steeply pitched gable, front-facing gables, with which often um, flare on the ends. Um, they often have arched doorways 
And even on occasion, you'll see a lot of stone accents on these style homes. Another style that you might commonly see throughout the district is the Victorian. And these are often rather um, asymmetrical in comparison to some of their earlier period um, counterparts. They're often very eclectic and have uh, heavily ornamentations or details, specifically around the porches with spindles. Um, and often the gables are accentuated by specific detailings like um, shake shingles or other um, decorative detailings. And then last but not least, another common um, style you'll see throughout the district is the craftsman style. While the two-story craftsman style are probably more prominent in the district than um, one-story bungalow craftsmen, you do have a couple examples of one-story bungalows in the district. Um, the two-story are just a little bit more, more prominent. And these style buildings can often be have exterior cladding of brick or lap siding. They can often be um, wood shingles or even stucco. Another common feature of a craftsman bungalow would be large bulky columns supporting the front entry stoops or porches. Um, in addition, they often have very detailed windows or multi-pane windows. And one of the examples pictured here, you actually see the diamond or lo lozenge style windows. Um, and then often you would see uh, three over ones or four over one windows or even eight over one windows. And that's a brief uh, history and architectural synopsis of what you will see in the University Architectural Conservation District. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions about this district or any of the city's other districts, please feel free to email preservation at columbiasc.gov.